Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Natalia and I will be your host for the day. I'd just like to share the programme with you for our Clearing Open Day. We have lots of sessions. Um, so we've got some sessions coming up on exploring medicine, exploring our science courses, uh, preparing for online learning and student life panel. So if you are interested in any of our other sessions, please do sign up on the link that we will share with you in the chat or do go to our website. In this particular session, um, we've got Gavin Taylor, who will, is our Assistant Registrar of Student Services, and he will be covering student finance accommodation and also some information on enrolment. So it's a really useful and practical session on your next steps um, for starting in September at St. George's. I'm now going to pass over to Gavin and let him tell you all about student accommodation and student finance. Hello there, everybody. Uh, good morning. I'm glad you could join me. Uh, my name's Gavin Taylor, uh, and I'm the Assistant Registrar for Student Services here at St George's. Uh, my main job is to look after the teams that look after students and their non-academic needs. So I look after things like housing and finance and the disability service and your well-being and your health and those kind of things as well. This morning, I'm going to talk to you about um, student accommodation, student finance, um, and a little bit about your enrolment, as Natalia said. So if we're all ready, why don't we jump in? Um, so um, I love this slide. Um, I, I asked the team to, uh, to, to, to put something up that said, don't panic, uh, which is, I think, something I should include in every presentation I ever give now. So uh, student finance. Um, I'm assuming, as I'm talking here, that everybody has got an application into student finance uh, in some sense for a course that they are apply were applying for, um, even if your plans have now changed. So I'm going to talk in that way. Uh, do ask me questions if it turns out that you're not quite as far along in the process as that. So um, the most important thing to say in relation to student finance uh, is that there is no deadline. There's not a deadline for um, applying for Student Finance England. There's not a deadline for apply, applying for the training grant from the NHS Learning Support Fund if you're on an Allied Health Professions course. So the issue isn't um, that you've missed the boat. Um, the issue is making sure that you've got funds in your pocket for the term starting. So if you haven't got an application in, get one in now. The links are at the bottom of the screen there, um, gov.uk student finance um, or the NHS link there as well. So get your application in. Um, if you haven't, or things need to change, don't worry at this stage. Um, the deadline uh, for having to pay us, um, as well as being the guy who makes sure you've got money in your pocket, I'm unfortunately the guy you need to pay for quite a lot of things. So I'm responsible for making sure the tuition fees come in, and I'm also responsible for halls rent. Now, neither of those things are due until the last day of October which means that even if you have to make changes or even if you don't have an application in place at all yet, there's plenty of time to get things sorted out. Uh, the main issue as you get started with the term is making sure you've got a bit of money in your pocket so you can have a little bit of fun um, and make sure you've got some food. Now, the university can help with that a little as well. Um, so do ask us if that's a problem, but please don't worry about having to make changes. Um, please don't worry about things being immediately due when term starts. That's not going to happen. Um, so there's time to change things. If your circumstances have changed, either because you were thinking about going to a different uni, you're now coming to St George's, or uh, you were planning on coming on one course and you're now coming on a different course, that's all absolutely fine. The best thing to do is just to let your funders know as soon as you possibly can. Um, and in many cases, the Student Finance England or Wales or Scotland um, will just swap things over. All it takes is a phone call uh, or a web chat with them or something similar and it, they will just swap over the course or they'll swap over the uni. It really is as simple as that. If there are more changes to make, uh, that's fine as well. What will happen is they'll give you an interim support notification, which means they'll give you an interim loan and then fix it once term starts. So you will, they, they will certainly pay the, your fees, they will certainly pay your maintenance, but they may have to do some work behind the scenes to make sure that things are working as term gets underway. So the most important thing really is just to let them know that things have changed as soon as possible. If you let them know before term starts, usually that's that. All you have to do is tell them and it's done. 
if you wait until after term starts, it usually gets us involved in sorting things out as well, which can be a bit more complicated and take a bit more time. So please, please do try and get that sorted out before you start your term. I know they're coming up soon, especially if you're starting something like paramedic science. But please, if things have changed, just give them a quick call, talk to them on the web, things will get sorted out. So that's student finance. Let's talk a bit about accommodation. Um, so um, on the screen there now, we've got some pictures of um, our halls of residence. That's Horton Halls. Uh, and most of our first year students will stay in halls. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that, and I'll talk a bit about uh, COVID-19 in halls. Um, I'm pleased to say that all the things that are happening on there, um, including playing pool and including playing table tennis, are pretty much going to happen just as, as they were. Um, some of those folk might be wearing face coverings when they do it, um, and some of the folk might be sl staying slightly further apart. But halls is still open. Um, fun is still going to be had, and the thing's still going on there, definitely. Um, so, as I said, most of our first year students stay in halls of residence. There still is space in halls of residence. We make sure that we've got a bit of space aside for students who are coming to us through clearing. So please do get an application into us if you want to stay in halls of residence. Um, do just check out our website. There's a link on there. It's all over the place. Just get in and make a, uh, an application. If you don't know much about our halls, um, it's uh, Horton Halls of Residence, about a mile away from university. Um, about 500 people live there. There's 800, 486 bedrooms. Um, they're divided into nine blocks um, and built around two big central courtyards. Um, so there's plenty of space for outdoor socialising, and I'm going to get on to, to that and how that's going to work um, in, in a minute. Um, the blocks all have lifts. Uh, there are uh, six common rooms uh, in halls. There's storage for about 300 bikes, and there are laundry facilities as well. So there's lots going on there. Now, uh, there are some pictures there of a flat, which is great. Um, so all of our rooms in halls are en suite. So every room has a, uh, a shower and WC built in. Everything's en suite. Um, the rooms are organized into flats with their own front door. Um, usually, uh, the flats have six bedrooms in them, um, depending on the geography of the building. Sometimes the flats are a little smaller, a little bigger, but mostly it's six. Um, built around a shared kitchen, which you see right there um, on the furthest left. Um, we've got two different types of accommodation halls. We've got what we call standard accommodation, what we call premium accommodation. Um, the rent for standard accommodation is £172 a week next year. That includes all of your bills. Uh, and the uh, rate for the premium accommodation is £182 a week. Now, the difference between standard and premium, put very bluntly, is the size of the bed. Uh, the, in standard accommodation, uh, there's a single bed. Uh, in premium accommodation, there is a small double bed, so it's a bit bigger. Um, it's worth noting that both the blocks are very new, as you can see from the pictures there. Um, standard was built about 10 years ago, uh, and premium was built about seven years ago, so they're both very new. Um, I would add that um, standard has been refurbished uh, slightly more recently than premium, so um, really depends on 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 what you want um i guess i joke that there, there'll be no overnight visitors in halls so uh, regardless uh if you sleep like a starfish maybe a double bed but um but otherwise so um do apply soon for halls of residence if that's where you're planning on staying there is still space um just to say a couple of things uh in relation to contracts for this year specifically it is possible to come a little bit late uh it, normally you'd be starting very soon uh, in fact, if you're doing paramedic science, um, actually the move-in for that starts next weekend, so it comes up very quickly indeed. It is possible to come a little late. If you're getting organised a little bit late, uh, if you are planning on uh, attending essential teaching on site a little bit later than the, the beginning of September or the very end of September, or you've got visa issues or other things to sort out, it is possible to come late this year. That's fine. Just talk to us. It is also possible uh if you are if you haven't moved in yet and you change your mind about how you want something to work so if you're thinking about getting an application i'd encourage you to get it in if you change your mind that's okay we'll let you out of your contract this year without any hassle so go ahead and get the application in. there's no risk to you get that done now if it's if it turns out that you actually you think i'll commute instead in the circumstances absolutely fine we can get you out of that contract too so do get an application in um so um, in terms of the, the slightly more serious end of things, uh, let me talk about COVID-19 in halls. You'll have seen quite a lot of this in the press, I think, 
Um, and we're no exception in that we've made a lot of preparations for students moving into our halls of res, particularly this um, September, um, August and September as folk are moving in. So what will be happening this year? Uh, to start with, we'll be having socially distant move-ins. So normally we have a big party move-in weekend. Um, we're going to be moving in much more slowly in a much more staggered way this year. So actually move-ins, as I mentioned, paramedic is going to be starting next weekend. Um, so students will be moving in over an entire week. Um, so they'll be starting a good week before their program starts and moving in slowly. You'll be given a booking in slot um, and you'll be invited to come within that, that two hour block to lift out a single other person uh, and move in all your belongings in that time. Um, so you'll be given slots once you've made your, your booking. If you need to move in any sooner, that's fine as well. Um, we've got things organized in such a way that if you're coming in from overseas, uh, and you need to self-isolate before you kind of join your course, that's fine, we've made provision for that too. Do just get in touch with us and ask us about it. Uh, the way that things will work is that once you've moved in, each of the flats in halls is going to be its own household. So that means that with the six people, the five other people that you're living with, uh, you don't have to maintain social distance. It's not possible long-term in halls, that will be your household. Um, everybody outside of your flat once you've moved in, is going to be a visitor now that includes people who are coming from elsewhere in halls to come and hang out that includes people coming from outside of halls that even includes family even if you've moved away from home so even if it's the folk that you were living with outside term time once you've moved into halls and during term you need to maintain social distance from those guys as well or think very carefully about what happens when you move home uh, over christmas and those kind of things so that will be your household now visitors are going to still be welcome uh, when the when halls stuff and running and we're, we're we're into term, it's going to be slightly different than than how it will usually work. Just like another flat, just like a house, just like how things may have been working at home for you over the summer already, um, visitors can come from one other household at a time. So what that means is you could have a couple of friends over from another flat in halls. Uh, you could have a friend from home or from outside of halls come and stay, uh, come and visit rather. Uh, you could come, uh, even mum and dad or uh, another family member can certainly come and hang out, um, have a cup of tea or a glass of wine in the kitchen with you. That is absolutely fine, um, absolutely terrific, but it will be one household at a time. So you'll need to work pretty closely with your flatmates to make sure you've got your visitor schedule right. Um, what it will mean though as well though is no overnight guests will be allowed at halls in the, in the term ahead. Um, it is possible, um, there's plenty of space in our kitchens, they're nice and large. Um, there's a snapshot there in the corner, but they are very big areas, so there's plenty of space to be in there um, and socially distant from friends, family, folk coming from outside. The bedrooms themselves, um, there's just not enough square meterage uh, to allow people to be in the bedrooms when they're visiting the flat, which means as a result there won't be any overnight guests allowed in halls in the term coming. So um, as well as that, um, some facilities will be working slightly differently than they normally would. Uh, our main common room from the previous slide that will be open. Um, we'll have some rules around capacity and how we'd want folk to engage. So um, table tennis will be okay, but if you're playing pool and standing a little too close, it might be time for the face coverings. Um, the smaller common rooms, we've got five of those, they won't be open for general use, but you can book in to have an event. So if you want to have uh, a movie night on the, on the big screen tellies that are in there with your flatmates, for example, um, you can certainly book in to do those, but you need to make arrangements a couple of days ahead of time for that to happen. And then we'll have special rules around um, getting your post, how many folk can be in the laundry room, um, how to get into the bike store, those kind of things. So we have thought very carefully about how to make sure that you are safe and well and protected while you're there. Um, we've also got lots of support in place uh, in relation to cleaning, in relation to making sure that folk are supported um, if for whatever reason they have to self-isolate, whether it's visitors or whether it's coming in from overseas or whether it's something else going on. So there's lots going on. In terms of your flatmates, and I guess your flatmates are going to be extremely important, uh, certainly in the first term, there'll be, there'll be a lot of social contact there and potentially a limited amount in other places. Uh, the way we organise things is that we try and ensure that you're not the only person in the flat on your course. Um, and we do try and ensure that there's a mix of courses. The, you'll have seen in the press, I think, that a lot of universities are planning on um, introducing course bubbles where everybody in the flat is, is, is in the same boat and on the same course um, and can mix that way. Things work slightly differently for us at Georgie's. Um, the, the course teams will be talking about how uh, the teaching is going to work on site over the term. 
our groups that will be coming on site will be smaller than the full cohort. Um, and because we are a healthcare university, we are uh, a bit keener on our PPE uh, for some of the teaching than, than other places would be uh, if you are you might be doing an arts degree for example there's a lot more PPE around the place so um, we won't be running the same social bubbles but things will work slightly different for us we've thought those things through um, everybody getting on and everybody pulling together as a team is going to be extra important so we're going to have lots of social opportunities um, and lots of ways of getting together with your flatmates and kind of building a, a unit while you're there um, our resident advisors those are graduate students that live alongside the undergrads in halls will be organizing all kinds of online events um, you'll be seeing them uh, and talking through all kinds of different stuff that you guys can do. We think it's going to be a, a very different, but actually a, a, a really fun term in Halls Res coming up. Um, the, uh, not everybody is going to move into Halls of Residence. Um, and one of the questions that we frequently get is about finding accommodation that's outside of Halls of Res, whether you're a mature student or you're coming a bit later or that's, that's not your style. Um, there are lots of opportunities nearby. Historically, Georgia, uh, around Georgies in Tutig, they have been, it's been very easy to find private accommodation. There's lots of student accommodation, a really mature community uh, of student housing. So it's actually very easy to find uh, a private flat. Um, quite often as our uh, final year students move out, they're, they're often looking for uh, second year and other students to move in and take over their part of the lease. So that happens quite a lot. It's actually very easy. Um, Within walking distance of Georgia, there's actually another private halls of residence, uh, Furs Down Student Village, and we've got preferential rates with those guys, if that's more your style. Um, and also because we're part of the University of London, we are engaged with our housing service there. So um, all kinds of different things. We've got, uh, there's a list of approved landlords all over London. Uh, we can do things like contract checking. We've got a legal advice service. There's lots of different ways that we can help you find accommodation. So if you're not planning on staying in halls, but are looking for a place to live in Tutic, get in touch with us at the accommodation team and we can talk you through all the things that you need to know and help you get that journey underway. I hope that helps with accommodation. Now, the last section I want to talk about is enrollment and how that's going to work very briefly. Um, courses by and large, um, are going to be starting on their advertised dates. Um, I say by and large, they're entirely going to be starting on their advertised dates. Um, but we'll be running very differently. Now, the courses themselves will be talking to you about how the teaching is going to work, certainly for the term ahead. Um, the university is currently on a phased return to site. Now, that return to site has four phases, and we're currently entering phase three. Um, what phase three means is that essential activity uh, can take place on site. Um, but that's the limit of what we're doing. So what we're looking at is things that will have you on site um, for things that are absolutely essential um, and then getting folk to step off site again. That'll, that'll pertain to how your course is being structured. They'll talk about that. But that also pertains to how enrollment's gonna be structured as well. Um, so we are working pretty much the same way. So most of the things uh, for induction and enrollment are gonna be managed on site, uh, managed online rather, uh, this year. Um, so um, we will have a number of different things. One, uh, we will have uh, an online, uh, entirely online enrollment. Um, check our Get Started pages and they'll talk about um, how to do that. Um, most of the induction uh, will be online as well. We've got uh, pages on our VLE where you can go through and learn all about the university, all about the different technologies you can use uh, to support your learning um, and all the other things we want you to know about our community. So uh, our uh, our anti-racism training, our sexual consent training, our um, discussions about our community and how and how best to 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 join it, um, and all the things that you really need to know will be online in our VLE. We're also going to be having some live online events as well. Um, the schedule for those is already up on the Get Started pages, so there'll be a, a big keynote welcome uh, for everybody starting. Um, and there'll be online Q&As from my team so that um, you can join us and ask us any questions, um, either from something that's come up in this, this presentation or anything that's been burning along. Those will be happening at 12 o'clock uh, every Thursday uh, online uh, during the end of August and all the month of September and into October. Those will be happening online as well. And lastly, we'll be getting folk online uh, on site for a day uh, to undertake the, the really essential things that have to have to be done in person. Um, so we'll be inviting everybody on site.
to get an ID card. ID cards are very important at St. George's. As you'd imagine being attached to a hospital site, the security at George's is fiercer than an awful lot of other universities. So we need to make sure that you've got an ID badge that you can use to access areas um, for later on in terms of getting in to do that. Um, also, if your course has an occupational health requirement, um, they are pretty high tech occupational health, but they haven't quite worked out yet how to take blood uh, without seeing you in person. Uh, so we're going to have to get you in to get your occupational health clearance. And while we've got you in sight, we'll take the opportunity so that you actually meet the, the team that will be delivering your course in person before we get started. The way that will work is we will be writing to everybody individually. There'll be a schedule up very soon to say when those days are happening. Um, we'll be writing to every student individually to let you know where to come um, and what time to be there. We'd ask you to be there within the time that we ask you so that we can get you in, make sure that everybody is safe and we'll have you in, in small groups to do that. Um, so that's my very quick run through uh, of finance and accommodation and a little bit about how enrollment is going to be working. Most everything that I've said is on the Get Start pages uh, and is on our website generally as well. So um, please do have a look there or please don't hesitate to ask any question. Amazing. Thank you, Gavin, so much for sharing kind of all that detailed information about mm. enrollment, accommodation and finance. Um, we've actually got a, a few questions. So yep. the first question is from Sean, who said um, he's got an issue with his student finance and the yep. processing of the original application was delayed. When does okay. he have to resolve this by? OK, uh, well, back, back to my first slide. Don't panic, Sean. Uh, the, um, the, the answer to that question is let's get that sorted together as soon as we possibly can. So um, in terms of things like tuition fee loans, uh, or maintenance loans, for example, that are going to pay your rent. Don't worry about those. Those aren't going to be due for a number of months now. So we, we've got time to get that sorted out. The best thing is to get that, that, that reapplication back in as soon as possible so we can get those details together and to get in touch with our student finance team. So check, get started, check our web pages or studentfinance at sgul.ac.uk if you can remember that email address. Pop us a line and let us know what's going on so we can help. But we've really got um in terms of any big payments that are due we've got quite a long time to sort that out what we're most interested in to make sure is that you've got some money to live on when you arrive so um let's work to get that sorted so drop us a line get that re-application in as soon as you possibly can amazing and our next question is that the nhs support learning fund is not for uh, medical students so what what do you suggest that uh, an attendee does uh the the nhs learning support fund is not for medical students uh that's that's absolutely right um however all of the medical courses are funded by the nhs it just works slightly differently than it does for the students on allied health professions so uh depending on whether the attendee is on the five-year pro let's think about you know the five-year program um or if we've got someone for the four-year program if you're on the five-year program the nhs actually steps in and funds um, your tuition fees and your maintenance in your fifth and subsequent years at a slightly higher level than the um, than the learning support fund does for the allied health professions. So when you get to your final year, if you're going straight through the five year course, or your fifth and sixth years, if you intercalate along the way, the NHS will pay your full fees for those years, and they'll also offer you a maintenance bursary whilst you're studying. Um, to about the same level as most of a student loan. So they, they do step up and they fund in the same way, they just, to the same level just about, they just do it in a slightly different way. It's much more end-loaded than it is for the allied health professions. Um, in the, the first years, you're absolutely right, it's a lot more um, loan heavy, it's a lot more funded by Student Finance England or Wales um, or SAS if you're coming down from Scotland. Um, in terms of additional support, uh, depending on the maintenance loan that you're approved for from Student Finance England, Georgia's will also step in uh, for students who are coming from households with income below 40,000 a year with our um, Opportunity Fund grant. So there's a top up fund available for uh, folk coming from those households. Uh, we've got hardship funding available throughout the year. Um, that's especially important now, I think, in relation to um the workplace and folk not doing as much part-time work as 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 we'd normally expect students to do so so we're, we're thinking about that um as well 
Um, and there are lots of other sources of funding, and I'd encourage everybody really to go out and have a, a good look around for what some of the other funding alternatives might be. Um, it's very easy for me to, to sit here in my office uh, at home and say, um, have a very difficult conversation with mum and dad about funding around the kitchen table. Um, I'd still encourage everyone to do it. Um, but also, um, if you have a look online, uh, Funder Finder is a great website. Turn to Us is another great website. Um, have a look. There are plenty of charities and trusts and other organizations that are there to fund undergraduate study, especially in STEM and especially in healthcare. So go and have a look. Quite a lot of them are small pots of money. Um, they tend to be uh, hundreds or a, a couple of thousand pounds. But if students string a number of those together, actually, you can go quite a long way to, to, to funding yourself um, without the loan total going up. So there's lots of different ways there. So the NHS is involved a bit, but a bit later. Uh, there are other funding opportunities via St George's, depending whether you qualify them, qualify for them or not. And also, um, we'd encourage everyone to get out and go and have a look. And we've got some ideas of where to get started with going to have a look for places um, on our website. So go look in the student finance section, you'll find we've got some of those links that I talked about um, and some other ideas as well. But there's lots out there and plenty of time to go looking as well, actually, if you're in medicine, you're starting in September. Um, really, the season for looking is has really not been long started. Thank you, Gavin. Um, uh, we've shared the, get, the link to the Get Started page in the chat as well, Great. so you can go directly from there. Um, so we've got another question from an attendee. So can I pick who I live with? Um, I prefer to share with other girls. Uh, to an extent, you can pick with it. So um, in terms of the attendees, uh, second half of the question, um, can I live with just girls? Yes, absolutely. Uh, the, uh, the, the one uh, request that we will always grant um, is for someone to live with, um, live in a single sex flat. So if you um, would prefer to live with all women or you would or you prefer to live with all men uh, then absolutely we will take that into account uh, in relation to other requests um, I think as I mentioned in the presentation we do try and mix folk up it's really not often possible to uh, to stay with what we'd really like to stay with sometimes folk will arrive with friends and we'll say oh can I stay with Stephen, because I've known Stephen since I was at school. That's usually not possible to grant. Uh, but in terms of making sure that you are staying in a flat that, that makes you comfortable because you're staying with all women and all men, absolutely we can do that. And I think also, um, not it's not always the case, but it, 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 I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that, that students um, you know, often are placed um, amongst um, students from, from their course. Um, yes. No. Absolutely. Ab yeah. Uh, absolutely. So, the, so the way the way that we the way that we try and organise halls is that um, we want everyone to stay with uh, fellow students on their course, but not just with fellow students on their course. So we 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 take great pains to make sure that no one is in a flat as the only medic or the only paramedic or the only physiotherapist. We'd always make sure that there are at least two or three of you in there. So you've got someone on your course that, that you're sharing a space with. But we also want you to take the opportunity to meet the rest of the, the multidisciplinary team in hospital. So, so we do want you to, to, to live with medics and live with paramedics and live with physiotherapists. So we do try and create a blend as well as making sure you've got a, a close course colleague that, that, that you can talk about the, uh, the long hours uh, and the, the CBL case with. So we do both of those things. And as I said, um, as well, in relation to COVID, that is going to be the case as well this year. Our, the way that we're managing social bubbles um, in halls and, in, um, and on campus itself for the essential teaching um, is slightly different because of the nature of the university that we are than it would be at uh, a different university. So that's what's going on there. Perfect. So that's all the questions that we have so far for this session. If you do have a question, um, uh, you can send it in for the next couple of minutes. Um, I'm just going to ask you, Gavin, I guess, to I guess wrap up any any further information that you want to share with us about, you know, how can people get in contact with student services or sure. anything you want to tell us about uh, your team? Absolutely. So, so we, I mean, very broadly, as I said, we manage and look after really all of the non-academic aspects of student life 
so uh, everything from the chaplaincy and counselling services to the accommodation team to the um, to the student to the student finance team. So we both look at making sure that you've got money and and take it off you at the same time. Um, so a, a real mix of different things. The disability service falls into there as well. So. Um, we've got uh, a fantastic uh, advisor in our student life center. So all of the services that I'm talking about uh, fall into what we call the student life center. The student life center has a, uh, a front desk and reception area just by the front door to the university. And that's headed up by a fantastic guy called Joe Phil Bride, um, who's there to really answer just about anything that students throw at them. Everything from, and he really has dealt with everything from um, somebody falling off their bike outside the front door through to looking for um, international students lost teddy bear up in one of the wet labs. He really does cover the lot. Um, so uh, that's there. While we are uh, in phase three, as opposed to fully open, um, the, the, the Student Life Centre will be open for uh, during, the, during the induction enrollment period. So we're there full time during there. And then it will be open some hours during the week. But most of what Joe is doing is online. So he's seeing students. Um, a bit like this via web chat. Um, it, we've got phone lines through, he's dealing with all the different things that way. So um, we're there all the way through the week, even if sometimes we're not um, in the building. But um, when students are there, we're absolutely there. Um, in terms of contact, um, we will probably see um, for all the various different services, we we actually worked out some stats. Worked out. We probably see each each student about 12 times over the course of the year. So I imagine we'll see each of you about once a month. Um, but it could be all kinds of different things. It could be a, a standard letter. It could be an appointment to see the chaplain. It could be uh, speaking to the career service. It could be all kinds of different things. And we're set up to deal with um, just about everything that you can throw at us, we hope. Amazing. Thank you so much, Gavin, for coming and sharing further information about finance and accommodation and all the useful bits about enrolment. Um, thank you for joining us and watching um, at home. We really hope you kind of feel more informed now and that you've got further information about St. George's and your next steps in terms of... Leave, 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 leave that slide. I think that's a good one. <laughs> Do not panic. <laughs> it um, will be great. We're really looking forward to it. Exactly. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, we have lots of other sessions still taking place today. So please do sign up on our website and join us for the rest of the sessions. We've got some a student life panels. So you could ask questions for uh, to current students about their time at halls or finding accommodation and their experiences. But other than that, thank you very much for joining us. And we hope to see you uh, at one of our later sessions today. Thanks very much, everybody.